This is what a zero gap year timeline looks like if you started on day zero of freshman year. And this is what it looks like if you decided you wanted to be a doctor late, say sophomore year. These are the six things you need to do if you want to go straight through to medical school without sacrificing your golden college years. And principle number five is where most gap year hopefuls fail. Each principle is more important than the last, and at the end, I'll show you my real example of a no gap year timeline. Principle number one, you must know what happens in the room. You can summarize your three plus pre-med years in three minutes. In fact, that's what all medical schools do when they present your case to the admissions committee. Here are many examples of Reddit comments sharing what it's like in that executive decision meeting. Dr. John, who had the pleasure of interviewing you, or medical student Mary, takes your entire file and presents it in really three minutes. And in those three minutes, the entire admissions committee must understand what your X factor is, what your pre-med archetype is, what you stand for, and what you're going to bring to the class. It's a ton to get right in a three minute summary. Are you going to be their community advocate fighting for women's reproductive rights? or the pre-med heavily engaged in mentorship and education, helping to build a pipeline for younger underserved students to get to higher education? Or are you the clinician scientist pre-med archetype, where you'll be spending half of your time in clinic and half of your time developing innovative solutions in the lab? The scariest part of all this is that you are not advocating for yourself. You must convey your life story, your narrative, and your journey to medical student Mary or to Dr. John who will advocate on your behalf. And so now that you know that you must stand out on that stage, we can work backwards from that meeting to figure out how we can convey our best selves. In fact, with all of our application cycle students, we start with a one-liner exercise or a unique value propositions exercise where we identify what we want Dr. John and medical student Mary to say on our behalf. And we protect time to work on these grouped themes exercises to help medical student Mary and Dr. John remember what our pre-med is all about. Know what happens in the room so you know what you need to accomplish in the years leading up to it. Every year, over 50,000 pre-meds apply to medical school and over 60% don't get into a single one. If this video hasn't been completely trashed thus far, I highly encourage you to take a look at the free resources we have in our description box below. Click the link in the description box to find out more. And for now, let's go back to the video. Principle number two, build the timeline. Most medical schools will start in August or September, and you will want to start in August or September of the same year you graduated. If you know that's when your white coat ceremony is, you can work backward to identify the other key milestones leading up to it. Immediately before the white coat is the acceptance and the interview stage. That happens anywhere between October and March of the preceding year. Before that, you'll want to submit the secondaries, which happens in secondary summer in that June to October range, submitting earlier with quality, certainly better than later. And immediately before that is submitting your primary application, which in 2024 opens on May 28th. And to submit the primary, you must have all of its parts, specifically your GPA, your MCAT score, your extracurricular activities, and your letters of recommendation all must be ready. And remember, you can break each of these down as well and put them on your timeline too. Your MCAT, for example, requires a set of prerequisite courses, a year of biology, a year of OCHEM, a year of GenChem, a year of physics, a semester of biochem, and optionally some psychology and sociology courses. And now for letters of recommendations, most schools will ask for anywhere from three to five letter writers sometimes asking for science courses, non-science courses, and physicians who you may have shadowed. And often it takes more than 10 weeks to build a relationship strong enough for someone to advocate on your behalf. And remember lastly, and arguably most importantly, your extracurricular profile must be extremely well-developed 
by the time you apply to medical school. That means finding time for clinical experience, research, community service, and your passions all throughout these three years while concurrently juggling the GPA, the MCAT classes, the letter of recommendation building, and most importantly, living your college life. And if you're not a day zero freshman starting from scratch, you will need to compress all of this into your remaining one or two years before you apply in that spring of junior year. Adjust and you'll see that it gets pretty tight pretty quickly. One encouraging and beautiful thing about this timeline, however, is that you know exactly when you need to focus on things and when you don't need to focus on things. My dad used to tell me that when I am 40, I can worry about cutting the lawn. At this time, I'm not 40, so I don't need to worry about cutting the lawn. The same goes with your pre-med journey. If you're a freshman in fall quarter, you don't need to be reading cars passages because the MCAT is tucked away in a summer two years from now. Principle number three, write your story intentionally. It's very rare you'll find a pre-med who at the age of one knew they wanted to be a clinician, scientist, neurosurgeon using CRISPR-Cas9 immunotherapy to target specific lesions in the brain. Heck, when those pre-meds were one years old, that technology did not even exist. Finding your X factor and understanding what you really are passionate about is a difficult soul draining task. What worked for me and has worked for thousands of other pre-meds that I've worked with is really just exposure. You will find out what you care about when you have enough evidence accrued that says that activity is really fun or that activity was really meaningful to me. And so I believe that the best way to find out who you are is to fully commit to a ton of extracurricular activities. I call this the season of yes. For example, during my own freshman year, I joined an organization called I'm Home, which provided resources for people experiencing homelessness, including supplies and food services. Unfortunately, we didn't do any site visits more often than once a year, and so I never really got to know that population and my interest in that organization faded quickly. The mistake most pre-meds make during the season of yes is assuming that their bandwidth is capped. Even while I was with I'm Home, I also applied and joined many other organizations, including Vietnamese Community Health, a community health organization serving the Vietnamese and Hispanic immigrants in Orange County, as well as teaching eventually landing myself a position as a molecular biology learning assistant. Those activities really took off for me and ended up being core critical parts of my extracurricular profile. Your season of yes should be on the first third of your timeline, whether that's the first year if you have the full three years or the first two quarters of sophomore year because you're starting a little bit late. Whenever it is, you should be very aggressive during the season of yes and push your schedule to the limit. Say yes to everything that you're remotely interested in, every single opportunity that comes your way, because each and every one of them have a huge amount of potential on the back end if it ends up being the thing you really care about. On the back two thirds of your no gap year timeline, however, you will need to transition to a season of no. As you become more committed to your favorite extracurricular activities, the distractions will get bigger, brighter, and louder. Our student Harry, for example, had to say no to becoming an EMT supervisor so that he could make time to really develop his X Factor, building a nonprofit to create social services for caretakers who are experiencing burnout caring for elderly populations. Contextually, when he was a freshman, he spent the entire year trying to get his first job. And now as a junior being offered on a silver platter, the EMT supervisor position, he has to say no. And this is your season of impact where you're going to build real depth and stand out by the level of accomplishment that you've had in your extracurricular activities. Tanya, for example, is one of our fantastic students who in her social impact module was able to create an organization helping refugees process their visas. Having an aggressive season of yes, followed by a very aggressive season of no, is the only way you'll learn 
what you care about and develop world-class impact in it. Principle number four, your fourth year doesn't matter a single bit. Medical school admissions is a high stakes process. And so I like to be extremely conservative and risk averse. My recommendation is to assume that your application with no update letters as it stands in spring quarter on junior year is good enough to get you to your target medical school. That's how aggressive, conservative, and over the top you really want to be. Remember how you're spending your third year spring, summer, and all of your fourth year primaries during your third year spring, secondaries during the summer into fourth year, interviews during your actual fourth year fall quarter, and by the time medical schools have made a decision in the winter or spring, there's not a lot of room for you to really add anything to your application. And don't forget, in addition to writing your application and being on the interview trail, you still are a full-time student, taking anywhere from 12 to 21 units and are still likely very involved in your extracurricular activities, pushing forward big projects that you've been building for the last two or three years. If interviews ever come back in person, you're more likely to be doing your calculus homework on the plane than adding a new extracurricular to tell medical schools about. Principle number five, you only have one shot. Specifically, I'm talking about the MCAT. If you look at the possible timing of the MCAT exam, you'll find a couple of months where it's possible. If you wanna submit your primary on May 28th, you could theoretically take it in early May, April, March, February, January, all the way up to probably September of the previous year. No earlier than that, because during your second year, you likely have not finished your prereqs yet. My favorite place for it is right before school starts, junior year fall quarter in September or August. This gives you the entire summer to prepare for it, and it's the earliest where you have finished all your prereqs, meaning that the content is relatively fresh for you. If you don't do well at that time point, or you have started a little bit late on your pre-med career, you're pushing this exam to fall quarter your junior year, winter quarter your junior year, or worst case scenario, spring quarter your junior year. And the reason studying for the MCAT then is a formula for failure is that again, you're a full-time student balancing full-time extracurricular activities and building relationships for your letters of recommendations. Every single part of your medical school application is on fire, and why don't we just throw on another 40 hours of MCAT studying per week? It is not my favorite structure for success. At Pre-Med Catalyst, we recommend all of our students work through the rule of three, which basically says you should only focus on three things at once. For most juniors, it will be GPA, extracurricular activities, and letters of recommendations, and you do not want to throw the MCAT on top of that. And so if you take nothing else from this gap year video, please make sure that you take this exam seriously. Specifically, treat it like a 40, 60, 80 hour a week job. It will be the hardest you've ever worked on a standardized test in your life. That means if you can afford it, try not to have a part-time job eating away at your schedule. That means don't spend 30 to 50 hours a week in lab on research. Talk to your PI in advance to set your schedule up for success. You want to study to the point where even on your bad or worst days, you can score at a place that you are comfortable will make you competitive for your target medical schools. Principle number six, see a real example. I ended up taking zero gap years and getting into my dream medical school, UCLA, and here is exactly how I did it, from where my most meaningful extracurriculars came from to when I built my most meaningful letters of recommendation relationships to when I took my classes for the MCAT and my prereqs and everything in between. I want you to see just how jam-packed a gap year timeline really looks so you can modify your own timeline accordingly. That video is here. I'll catch you over there and thank you for your time and attention.